that is, I watch that and get goosebumps. I mean, how do, how do you feel when you watch that back? It's a while ago now, but does it yeah. still give you that same feeling? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, like you say, it's seven years ago, so it's, you know, a lot has happened between that point and now, but every time I watch it, it still gives me that feeling. I still remember that adrenaline that I had, you know, crossing the line and the emotion that I had through those two days. So, yeah, that kind of feeling will always be with me and I'll tap into it throughout the whole of my life, without and, a doubt. And does it make it... Everyone talks about it, but that sort of that home advantage, the home games, does it... You've done numerous games. Does it make that much of a difference... Does it make it extra special? Yeah, so going into the London Olympics, obviously everyone was talking about this home advantage that we'll have and how it's going to be, you know, the most amazing games and we'll definitely feel an edge over the rest of the competitors. And I kind of felt like, yeah, you know, is it going to be that great? It's going to be a great Olympics, but are we going to feel like we have an edge over everyone? And absolutely, when I stepped out into the stadium, it was like no other experience. All the crowd, you know, all the British flags, everyone there, you know, rooting for you and, and cheering you on um, was a massive, massive advantage. And we obviously saw that in all the medals that we were able to win. And, and that film started off with Sheffield. So we know you're from Sheffield. I mean, just, where did it begin? I mean, it's, it's one of those weird ones. I was a modern pentathlete, which is even weirder than, than heptathlon. <laughs> but I mean, what, you know, where, do you, where do you start? I mean, where did it start for you? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it started by accident, really. It was, you know, many of you have got kids and you, you're looking for activities to do in the summer holidays. And it was just by chance that my parents took me to a summer camp and they took me down to Don Valley Stadium and they said, right, two weeks of activity, you know, do all the events, see if you enjoy it, cheap childcare. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah, you know, from that point, I just, I absolutely loved it. I, I wanted to go and train once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Um, and that was my real taste of athletics for the first time, and I suppose I was hooked from the start. I mean, what, what we often see is we see the end product. What, what the public are, are allowed to see is the end product. You come to the Olympic Games, you stand on the roster, and what they don't see is that seven events. So that's seven events that you've got to train for. You add on top of that strength and conditioning, you add on top of that flexibility, and all the other stuff that goes on top of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a massive burden for a multi-event athlete how do you sort of balance that against the rest of life because life still goes on yeah I think that's a really really important part of it it's it's not just doing the training it's about doing the right training having the balance of what do you spend more time on what do you kind of reduce training with and how do you get the strength that you need to be a fantastic thrower and have great upper body strength but also not have too much upper body bulk so that you're still a great high jumper yeah. so it's that balance of making sure that you're kind of conditioned in the best possible way um, and taking advantage of all those events and as many points as you can score. And to be honest, that was a lot down to my, my coach, Tony Minicello. He was fantastic at planning every week. You know, we had five week blocks, every day was planned. You know, he'd do like a four year plan. It was all about long term planning, making sure that we knew when I needed to peak, when I needed to be at my absolute best and how we were going to make those small improvements as well. So massive balancing act, but... Um, difficult balancing Yeah, very yeah. difficult, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I, I was chair of the BOA Athletes Commission uh, for 96 to 2000, at the time when money came in, when lottery funding, 1998 was when it first started. People often think it's a long, long time ago. Actually, it's really quite recent, mm. but that was effectively right at your sweet spot. And that, I mean, did, did money make a difference? Did that move from what was amateur, in inverted commas, yeah. into professionalism? What, what was that like? How did that affect your training? Yeah, I mean, it came at the most perfect time for me because I was starting my journey into athletics and starting to, you know, take part in competitions, starting to pick up a few medals at school level and club level. And, yeah, I, I was, you know, awarded lottery funding. And for me at that time, it made a huge difference because... I didn't have, you know, money, my parents didn't have money to spend on equipment and travelling about and competition, entry fees and all these other things that build up. So that lottery funding helped me to, you know, to remain focused on training, to have the equipment that I needed and also just to not have the distraction of having to do, you know, jobs after school, part-time jobs at weekends. I was able to just solely focus on training, so it was, it was a huge, huge benefit for me. It's interesting because if you look at your sort of your move, your history through sport, is that actually things come together, but there are challenges to overcome. And then in 2014 came your son Reggie, uh, and now it's actually motherhood and 
sport. And, and we talk about this a lot, you talk about it a lot, because actually now the sort of psyche has changed around athletes with Serena Williams coming back to women, all those type of things. How, how is it to balance that motherhood against elite training? Yeah, I think it's, it's, I've spoken about it before and it's definitely one of the most challenging parts. Um, those are the great memories that I remember at the time I'd have my soft tissue therapist, Derry, and he'd come round and he'd have to treat me three times a week. And, you know, it was always bedtime for Reggie, so I'd read him a little story. And, you know, he has all these memories of that time. So it was, it was a fantastic experience for both of us. Um, but at the time it was so challenging. You know, I was trying to regain all the strength and structure within my training, trying to build back into full-time training learning how to be a great mom and all the things that come with that, mentally feeling completely different, um, let alone physically being completely different and just, yeah, learning to become an athlete again, really, after having my son. It was um, that kind of back to the beginning. I kind of thought that after I'd had him, I'd just step back into training and be like winning everything and, you know, regain my speed straight away. But actually it was kind of going right back to the start and learning my events again and building up my strength from the beginning. It's interesting, I've spoken much of this in, in the press about the, the role of pregnancy. There's almost a, a feeling amongst some press now that it's a good thing to be pregnant and to have children because it makes you a better athlete physically. I mean, to my mind, one of the key things is actually just psychologically is that there is a change in pressure. And I, I mean, did you feel that at the time? I mean, how do you deal with the pressure of being a mother and the pressure of actually being an athlete? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a huge amount of pressure. I think being a mother, so much more because, you know, they're your children, you want to give them the best start in life you can possibly give them. And, you know, I've read many articles about athletes coming back after having babies. And for me personally, I had people that doubted me. You know, they thought that perhaps this was the end of my career and that, you know, maybe I wasn't going to go on to those higher heights again. And I looked at that at the time and it made me so much more focused and determined. And I look at other sports women that are doing it and I think sports women and sports men are the most determined, strong-minded people. You throw motherhood or fatherhood into that where you're doing it for your child. Your motivation is completely through the roof. So you're like a completely different animal. And I definitely felt that when I came back, I wanted to prove not only to my child that I was gonna be a fantastic athlete again. I wanted to prove to anyone that doubted me that you know, you can do this. If you set your mind to achieving something, then you can achieve it. You just have to follow a process, follow your goals and, and keep working hard for it. And, I mean, and you really did that because coming to 2016, coming back to the highest, the biggest stage in sport. I mean, what, what was the difference? Obviously 2012 home games, gold medal, and then coming into Beijing. How, how do you reflect, into Rio, how, how do you reflect on that? two completely different journeys. So as going into London 2012, I was very much naive to the Olympics. I'd never done an Olympics before. It'd always been this dream up here that I aspired to achieve in. Um, and yeah, the, the pressure of becoming the face of the games kind of came out of nowhere. And I was kind of just rolling along, just enjoying it where I could. It was a lot of pressure at the time, but I had you know fantastic people around me that were kind of keeping it all together for me, keeping me grounded. And then obviously I had two days of, of fantastic performances where everything just came together for me, which was unbelievable. And then my journey into the next Olympics was completely different. I felt that I didn't have that same pressure of obviously being the face and people expecting me to win, but I felt another overwhelming pressure of, you know, I'm doing this now for my son. And also, you know, I don't want to have wasted two years training and competing and missing time with him to get injured at the Olympic Games or to not even come home with a medal. So they were two very, very different games with different pressures. So which medal means the most? Oh, I mean, <laughs> I love them all. Um, I, London was incredible, yeah. but I think for me, winning my, um, my World Championship medal in 2015 in Beijing after having Reggie, that means the most because only my family and the people closest around me really realised how hard it was and how many moments of up and down where I, the only time in my career where I felt, you know, I, what am I doing? I just want to give up. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, that, that to me is the most incredible achievement. You know, so close after having Reggie, you came back and were the best in the world. I mean, a truly incredible feat. I mean, what, what, what's your attitude to expectant mums now or, the, or new mums? I mean, what, what, what's your advice to them? 
Yeah, I think that's what's really inspired me going into the next phase of my life. Yeah. So um, producing an app, Genis, which we've created, and it's, it's just recently been launched. And it's all about creating workouts, very similar to what I did when I was pregnant and you know, keeping fit and trying to maintain some, maintain some level of fitness, creating workouts that women can take confidence from, know that they're doing the right exercises, that they're supported in the right way, and particularly postnatally as well, because it's, it's a complete minefield. You don't know what's right, what's wrong. And even as an elite athlete at the time, I turned to Google and I was like, oh, what should I do? Should I do that? Should I do this? What's safe? What's not? Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really tough time and your life is changing so much as a, as a new mum and becoming pregnant for the first time. So that's definitely what's inspired me to go into this field of, you know, helping as many women stay active and be confident in doing exercise through their pregnancy and, and beyond and out the other side. I think we can, we can see a video of that now, but in essence, what you're talking about, exercise is key. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as we were chatting earlier, I mean, there's so little information out there for, for pregnant women, prenatal, perinatal, and postnatal. I mean, wh where do you think, though, in terms of your sort of athletic career and your background, how do you think that's moulded what you've done here and your approach to, to women who are pregnant? Yeah, I think the main thing was that I had a fantastic pool of people around me, some great, like a great support network. And one person that's been heavily involved in the creation of the app is my physio, Alison Rose. And she was fantastic in, you know, explaining to me how my body was changing. You know, basic things like you don't think about how tight your, you know, your, your muscles are getting, which changes the rotation of your pelvis. And you, you know, you stand and you sit in a different position and all these little effects that happen when you're pregnant, you kind of think that they're just gonna happen and you have no control over it. And actually, Ali taught me that by stretching my quads a little bit more, changed the, the kind of alignment of my pelvis, put my baby in a better position and stopped me having back pain, all these little things. And I just felt that wouldn't it be great to create it and put it into one place where women can access it and know that these are the right exercises to do at the right time of their pregnancy, be confident in what they would, they're doing, and hopefully that helps them back into full exercise when they, they've given birth. And what, what is your single piece of advice to oh gosh, a pregnant mum? Yeah, I think, I think it's all about confidence. I think when you're pregnant for the first time, you are thrown into a completely different world and you're, you know, you're terrified. Everything's about your baby and you don't want to do anything wrong. So I think it's about having that confidence, knowing that you can exercise and you can be active and that's gonna put you and your baby in a much better position going through your pregnancy and beyond, you know, once your child's born. And yeah, confidence is a huge, huge thing. So be confident in what you do, I would say to them. And of course, now it's, it, you've now got two children. Uh, it, it, it's the burden of being a mother <laughs> is quite large, of being a parent. You know, we, we know those people who've got children will understand that. Uh, you are a former Olympic world champion. I mean, how, how do you motivate yourself to stay fit into the future? And what does the future hold for Jess? Yeah, so training for me is, is completely different. When I retired, my coach said to me, he was like, oh, you'll never run again. You, you know, you won't be motivated to do it. You won't exercise. And, you know, for a period of time after I retired, two or three months, I did take some serious time just, you know, lazing around and enjoying not having to be at the track every day. But then very quickly, you know, I had that urge, that desire to keep training. But for me now, exercise is is probably more enjoyable. I kind of have that flexibility in what I do. So there's no strict, you have to do this session, you have to do that session, you have to be ready for this time to be, you know, at your peak and performing in front of the nation. I can go and do a hill session if I want. I can go and do circuits. I can do a longer run. I can just play around with, you know, enjoying exercise in a completely different way. So, but there is time restraints now. It's trying to fit it in, you know, in and around the children. I mean, I mean, talking about children, it's interesting. We've, we've got the most overfed, undernourished population in sapien history. 
We've got the least active population of children in sapient history. Uh, and we've got children now who are predicted to live shorter lives than their parents for the first time in Homo sapiens. I mean, what, what's, what's your, what, you, what, what do you think is the main problem for activity in children? Where, where do you see the problem and what we should be addressing? Yeah, I think that's really, really scary to hear that. Um, I think that for me personally, it's about what I'm doing as a parent. It's making sure that my children see activity and exercising as the norm and it's not a chore. It's not, right, we have to go out on a walk, we have to do this. It's finding enjoyable ways to get kids engaged in sport and not putting them off sport from a young age. I think that's a really key thing because so many kids feel the pressure of activity and the pressure of sport and, you know, almost want to go the complete opposite way. Um, so it's kind of about, yeah, making your children see, you know, see you exercising, see you enjoying it, doing little bits here and there, and it being a norm, like just a way of life. I think that's the most important thing. It's, it's interesting, when you say that, it strikes me that you are the poster girl for, for This Girl Can, uh, and you've now become the poster girl for This Mum Moves. I, I think, do you see your future sort of in a campaigning role to actually try and work with the stakeholders, people like UK Active and others, to try and promote physical activity across the age span. So we're not just talking about children, but across the age span. Is, yeah. that, is, that, is that something that, that you would like to do? Yeah, absolutely. I think when I retired, I was kind of thrown into this world of what do I want to do? What do I enjoy doing? And this is, this is me. This is what I'm absolutely passionate about. Activity, sport and exercise has been my whole life. And I've had some incredible opportunities through that. And I think for me now, it's about sharing it with other people. It's about helping people to understand how to exercise in the right way, how to get the most out of it and how powerful it can be. Um, and particularly, I obviously have a massive soft spot for mums being active and, and keeping them active through their pregnancies. So, yeah, it's definitely a passion of mine now. And what's your, just, what's your week look like in terms of activity? What, you know, what do you do? Um, so I do look back at my training days and I think, oh, why did I moan all the time? I could train all day, every day. Um, whereas now I kind of, I do a circuit on a Monday evening when the kids are in bed, like 20 minutes, just a quick blast. I'm all about kind of really high intensity, just kind of shocking the body, then recovering. And I still do hill runs. I take the dog out for a run, um, circuits and some light weights as well. So pretty much similar to what I used to do when I was a full-time athlete, but just condensing it down and changing it a little bit to suit you know, my life now and the little time that I have to exercise. <laughs> well, listen, I'm sure everybody in here would agree with me that you are truly an inspiration for physical activity across the ACE band, particularly for women, particularly for mothers and for children. So it just leaves me to say, ladies and gentlemen, Dame Jessica Ellis-Hill. Thank you.